In this video, I'm going to give you a small little introduction to the Moto interface. The Moto interface is broken up into four major areas. Let's check out the top part first. So I'm looking at this part of the screen right up here. This top part uh, starts with a series of tabs. Now each one of these tabs rearranges the Moto interface to highlight a particular workflow. As you can see here, I'm in the Model tab, and I know I'm in this tab because the text is kind of orange. Now in the Model tab, it's rearranged all the windows to highlight all the modeling tools, the modeling uh, window here in the center. We have access to our item lists and some uh, more important information or more detailed information uh, down here. But if we change these tabs up here at the top and change our layouts, it's going to change the interface to highlight this particular workflow. Now, the model and the model quad workflows are very similar. The major differences between the two are this center viewport here. In the model tab, you can see that we just have one big one, right? But in the model quad tab, our viewport is divided up into four smaller viewports giving us a unique perspective on our scene. We have, looking through the top here, here's our scene from the front. This guy over here in the bottom right is looking through our scene from the right. And then we have uh, a perspective viewport as well. If we change our viewport again to the paint tab, the viewport again is going to change. This time, we're, it's, uh, the viewport has been, been rearranged to highlight uh, the painting workflow. All our modeling to tools are gone, and they have been replaced with all the sculpting and painting tools. The viewport looks a little bit different, so we can start to paint with it. We have an image bin down here and a cool little color picker, and, and we, we still have access to our items and our shader tree. But, you know, this paint tab has been rearranged to highlight the painting workflow. And that's kind of the underlying theme between all these tabs, is that they're broken into workflows. We also have a UV tab, which highlights the UV editing so we can do our texture mapping. We'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, you probably already noticed that our, our sculpting tools are now gone, and now they've been replaced with all of the UV mapping and texturing tools. We have a layout tab up here at the top, which allows us to leverage an asset library, a collection of objects that we can enter into the scene. We have our animation tab, and I bet you can imagine what we're going to do in the animation tab, which this is where we're going to find all of our animation tools. Our, our layout tabs, or our layout tools have been replaced with all the animation specific tools. And we've also gained a timeline and some range sliders and some options that are specific to the animation workflow. If we jump over to the render tab, this is where we're going to start to see how our scene is going to be rendered. Uh, so we have a little preview window here, which is giving us an interactive preview of the final render. And I say interactive because if I rotate my viewport around, you can see that we're going to get a somewhat kind of live update to our scene. Uh, you've probably noticed that when I move this viewport, this viewport over here also changes. Well, this viewport is dedicated to looking through the camera. And I know we're looking through the camera because at the top left-hand corner of every viewport, this little icon here shows us which perspective we're looking through. This bottom portion is a general perspective viewport, which is going to give us a, a nice, uh, a nice uh, look at our entire 3D scene. This one's different from the others because it's showing us the lights, icons for our lights, icons for our camera. So all the tools in the render tab really support the rendering workflow and that's the common theme between all of these tabs they're just broken into workflows let's jump back over to the model tab and let's continue to explore the other three major sections of the Moto interface now I've already talked about this this column a little bit you've seen me kind of poke around in it as I explored the different tabs but this portion of the interface in every single one of these tabs is dedicated to our tools so as you can see here I'm in the model tab and now these are all the modeling tools and there's a number of them one other common UI uh, uh, theme in Moto are these vertical tabs. You're going to see them everywhere. And these vertical tabs, again, are collections of tools. Um, so here we are in the basic tools, and we have all of our basic modeling tools. But if we change and click on these other tools, you can see that we, Moto has a whole bunch of modeling tools, but they're all broken up into, sp into specific categories. So we have duplication tools, deforming tools, vertex editing tools. So these vertical tabs here are collections of individual tools to help out the modeling workflow. Let's go back to the basic tab, and I want to fire off the cube tool. This left-hand column here is broken into two major sections. We've been looking at the top, but I want you to look at, this, look at the bottom. 
This part of the interface is broken up into two areas and is divided by this line. And if we move our cursor over that line, you can see that we can move it up and down. Now, when we activate any tool inside of Modo, that tool's options are going to become visible down here. And I know I'm using the cube tool because in the tool options, it's always going to tell me which tool I'm using right here, right here. So it says cube, so I know I'm making a cube. And you can see here, here's all the individual options for the cube tool. Let's drop that tool and go over to, ooh, let's, I don't know, let's go over to the mesh edit tab and click on the slice tool. And again, you can see that our slice tools now have some individual options and those options come in down here. So the top part is where we select the tools and the bottom part of this interface is where we see that tool's individual options. Okay, so I talked about this, the top section. I talked about this left-hand column. Let's talk about this middle section, which is our viewports. I mentioned earlier that our viewports are kind of the windows into our three-dimensional scene. So this is where we're going to find all of our 3D objects and all of our items and be able to view and manipulate them in the three-dimensional universe. Now, it's important to remember that this viewport can be changed depending on which tab you are in. I'm in the model tab, so we get a single viewport. The model quad we saw earlier has four, you know, so each the viewport's going to change depending on which tab we're in. Let's go back to the model tab and look at the last part of the Moto interface, which is this right-hand column. This right-hand column has a number of important panels, and I want to highlight a few. Uh, the first and probably the most important one, in my opinion, is the item list. The item list is going to show us the, all the individual items and assets that we have in our scene. You can see I have the, here's that toy car, and if I select that item, it now gets shaded. We also have a camera and our light. So this is where we're going to edit each individual, edit and select each individual object in our scene from over here. Now, below it, there's a number of, of tabs. This first one is the Lists tab, and this is where you're going to find a list of all of the specific weight maps, the UV maps, the morph maps. These are some pretty advanced uh, um, maps in here, so we're going to get into that a little bit later. But it's, um, it's important to know where you can access and find them. There's the Properties tab, which is probably the second most important part of this part of the interface. You can see here in the item list that I've selected this directional light. When I selected that directional light, the Properties tab is going to show me all of the properties for this directional light. So you can see in the Properties tab, there we have the name for the directional light, and I can change that. And we also have all the positions and the rotation values for, for this light here. So this, the Properties tab, is going to be really important, something that you're going to be coming back to a lot. So make sure you remember where it is. These other, these other two uh, tabs, the Channels tab and the Display tabs, these, these include individual channels and elements for a number of selected items. We're going to get into these a little bit later, but just know where they are for now. Let's go back over to the Lists tab, because the Lists tab it also includes two other areas that I want to bring to your attention. This first part is the Pipeline and Presets. This is going to show you what tool you have activated, and you can mix and match tools and continue to make them uh, or continue to, to mold the tool uh, in, in this window here. Below the pipeline, we have the statistics and info panes, which is going to show us specific information about selected objects, like their location. You know, In the statistics, it's showing me how many vertices I have and polygons. So this part of the interface is going to show you very, very specific information. And last but not least, there's this command the, uh, section of the interface. This is where we can enter in commands, traditional text commands, into the Moto interface and uh, continue to use it more kind of on a programming language if we wanted to.